all wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss the idea behind galactic magnetic fields and the source of magnetism in the early universe, and specifically focusing on the origin of the seed magnetic fields, which we know existed for a very long time, but we never actually knew what formed them. Making this one of the bigger mysteries in the early universe, because when it comes to magnetic fields, based on various observations from various telescopes that can capture polarized light, we know that pretty much every galaxy is filled with magnetic fields, and they actually play a huge role in distribution of matter and in the formation of stars. In many cases explaining why certain galaxies become extremely active and form a lot of stars, whereas other galaxies become more quiet and potentially stop forming stars completely. But even more mysteriously, this new study possibly explains the existence of intergalactic magnetic fields, which we know play a huge role in the distribution of matter across the universe, but exactly how they influence everything is still actually unknown. But in this study, researchers potentially discovered one mechanism that's responsible for formation of everything when it comes to early magnetic fields. And it's a mechanism we've never known about before, but that the researchers behind this recent study referred to as a dust battery process. Or basically a kind of a magnetic dust battery that seems to produce magnetic fields from various dust particles. And so let's discuss this new study by Nadine Solomon and her team, focusing on the explanation and what this means. And I guess let's start with the image right here. What you're seeing here are two extremely large galactic clusters, a Bell 0399 and a Bell 0401, that were recently discovered to be connected by a magnetic field, which naturally produces a lot of different effects between galaxies, forming a kind of a magnetic bridge that very likely exchanges matter. And basically every galaxy we've seen so far seems to display something very similar. But the question has always been, okay, how exactly did all of this start? And more importantly, what effects did this have early on? And that second question is kind of important, because here it can potentially solve one of the biggest mysteries of the early universe, recently discovered and confirmed by the James Webb Space Telescope. In the last few months, researchers have actually been continuously discovering the same thing over and over. For some unknown reasons, early galaxies that existed right after the Big Bang somehow were able to produce enormous amount of stars really quickly and were producing way more brightness and more energy than anyone expected. And the explanation here was that something must be driving these star formations and something must be causing these galaxies to suddenly become super, super active. But it was never really clear what. And one of the potential explanations was basically these early magnetic fields. And so essentially, early galactic development and early star formation could have been encouraged and accelerated by very powerful magnetic fields in early galaxies. And naturally, images like this remind us that even today, magnetic fields are everywhere. Here's actually one of the early images of the Milky Way galaxy, showing us the magnetosphere inside our own galaxy as well. Although here is a much more precise, more recent image that you can learn about in one of the articles in the description that basically shows us extreme detail inside the galaxy and reveals all sorts of gas circulation that then produces these fields. Although here there is definitely a feedback mechanism where the gas that's driven by the fields then creates even more fields as it travels. And that's actually the result of what's known as the dynamo mechanism, the amplification of existing fields by various moving particles. But if we go back in time, the question is, how did the first field form and how did all of this start? And though in most cases dynamo mechanism forms most of the fields, such as for example the ones inside our planet, or really any planet, and even any star, in contrast, when it comes to large-scale magnetic fields, the story is not that easy to explain. For example, in a galaxy like this, it's actually unclear what's forming these fields, or better even, these fields. They actually seem to be located between galaxies, and so to form these fields and to have some kind of a source, something really bizarre must have happened in the beginning. But usually these intergalactic fields are much, much weaker. Just a fraction of the strength of the field on our own planet, but with one difference they can be huge in size, thousands and even millions of light years across. And so the question here is, what forms them and what created them? And while the scientists behind the study crunched the numbers, did the math, and actually came up with a relatively simple solution. They refer to this as a dust battery. And it really all starts in the beginning of the universe with those first powerful stars or population 3 stars, and extremely dusty galaxies that we know existed early on. And so when those first stars appeared, 
Within just a few million years, and possibly even much shorter than that, they basically all went supernova. And these initial supernova extremely likely produced huge amounts of gas moving really fast, which started to form some of the first interstellar medium, or basically space dust, that started to move really quick across the galaxy. Now obviously some of this dust then collapsed into new stars, forming population 2 stars, and restarting the cycle once again, but some of this dust kept moving away and very likely became intergalactic. But as soon as the second generation of stars appeared, which by the way was also extremely powerful, they basically started to charge all of these particles by their extremely powerful emissions. And so in essence, all of this dust now started to be accelerated even more, but on top of this started to acquire charge. And even today we can observe these effects around some really massive, really powerful stars. For example, Wolfreya stars that you can learn about in one of the videos in the description. And so in a very similar fashion, we now had very powerful stars in the middle, energizing and pushing away all of the gas. And all of this motion started to create consistent electric charge, which then naturally led to early magnetic fields. And that's of course because once the charge starts moving, magnetic fields are produced as a result. And though at first this was probably all uniform and extremely spread out, eventually all of this dust started to clump like it always does in various nebula. And so once these clumps started to form, this would very likely start to produce entangled magnetic fields, eventually leading to these first magnetic seeds, which then became stronger and stronger. Moreover, these fields would become extremely large, very likely stretching for thousands of light years, eventually leading to a kind of a self-amplification as various fields started to interact and as they grew in power. And so all of this was just the result of moving charged dust that formed various spatial fluctuations, eventually leading to the formation of seed magnetic fields that would then become stronger and stronger. Which is what the scientists in this case refer to as the dust battery process. Basically in this case, the electric field and the magnetic field were actually just the result of dust becoming electric. And here in the early universe, there's a chance that these fields became so strong that they allowed these galaxies to form stars very efficiently, thus amplifying the effects and leading to even more magnetism inside these galaxies. And though obviously this is just a hypothesis for now, right now this explanation is intriguing because it does actually solve a lot of problems. For example, in this case, these fields can operate very effectively over very large distances and especially near bright stars and following supernova. Moreover, they seem to be actually resilient to dissipation and can thus spread in the intergalactic space and even affect matter around galaxies very effectively. Thus basically explaining what we're seeing all over the place. And since other magnetic explanations usually require very specific conditions, such as for example shocks, very high ionization, or extremely high temperature, right now this dust battery seems to be a pretty good alternative explanation. An explanation of how the early universe created and developed its magnetic fields, which in this case seems to even function at extremely low metallicities and even in predominantly neutral gas. Moreover, it seems to be very efficient, close to supermassive black holes, and can amplify additional effects very quickly. And so right now this is actually a pretty intriguing explanation. Especially because according to the early calculations, it seems to be at least 100 million times more effective than previous models. And because in this case there are also different equations that can be incorporated into computer simulations, at this point the next step would be to try to test this on a supercomputer just to see what kind of galaxies would be formed and to then see if this can maybe explain what we're seeing with the James Webb. Actually, you might want to check out one of the previous videos about the recent discovery that once again confirms that early galaxies are just very different from what scientists expected. And for now, this might be one of the potential explanations. Now, obviously it will take months and even years to confirm all of this, but at the moment, explaining these magnetic fields through the process of dust battery does actually kind of make sense. We don't really know where this leads yet, but we'll find out in some of the future studies. Until then, check out some of the previous videos on the topic in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.